Okay. Lament for Thomas MacDonough by Frances Ledwidge. Ledwidge was born in 1887 near Slane, County Meath. He was from a family of nine children. His father died when he was young, leaving the family in poverty. He was a member of the Irish Volunteers and had a keen interest in Irish politics. He joined the British Army during World War I and died in an explosion in Ypres in 1915. He was a friend of Thomas Macdonough. What is a lament? A song or poem expressing deep grief or mourning when someone dies. Do you know anything about Thomas Macdonough and the 1916 Easter Rising? Macdonough was born in County Tipperary. He was an English and history teacher, political activist, poet, playwright, and a good friend of Francis Ledgewit, our poet. He was also an Irish nationalist and one of the leaders of the 1916 Easter Rising. 1916 Easter Rising, which took part outside the GPO in O'Connell Street in Dublin. It's also known as the Easter Rebellion. The Rising was fought by Irish Republicans to end British rule in Ireland and establish an independent Irish Republic. It lasted for six days. Members of the Irish Volunteers, led by schoolmaster Padraig Pearce, joined by the smaller Irish citizen army of James Connolly, along with 200 members of Common Naman, women's organisation, seized key locations in Dublin and proclaimed an Irish Republic. However, the British army quickly stopped the rising as they had vastly superior numbers and artillery. Most of the leaders were executed. The leaders read the Proclamation of Irish Independence and signed it. Thomas Macdonough was executed by firing squad in May 1916 at the age of 38. Even though our poet Ledwidge was serving in the British Army at the time, he was sympathetic to the cause of Irish freedom, for which Macdonough and others gave their lives for. In this poem, Ledwidge is mourning the loss of Macdonough, a poet, and also his friend who sacrificed his life for Ireland. Stanza 1. He shall not hear the bittern cry in the wild sky. Thomas Macdonough is dead in his grave, so he will never hear the sound of the bittern bird again in the sky. Wild sky. Here the sky is angry, which is an example of personification. He will not hear the bittern cry in the wild sky where he is laying, meaning where he is buried. The leaders were executed at Kilmainham Jail in Dublin. They were buried in a pit and covered with quicklime in Arbor Hill. The military cemetery at Arbor Hill is the last resting place of 14 of the executed leaders of the 1916 Rising. Nor voices of the sweeter birds. Thomas Macdonough will not hear the birds with a sweet sound because he is dead. Above the wailing of the rain. Wailing is crying because you are very sad. Personification. The rain is wailing or feeling sad for the death of Thomas Macdonough. Summary of stanza one. The poet describes the natural world 
with bird song, wind and rain. But MacDonagh is no longer alive, so he can't hear them. This stanza has a sad, mournful tone or mood. Stanza two. Nor shall he know when loud march blows. Because MacDonagh is dead, he will not hear the loud march winds. Through slanting slows, snows her fanfare shrill. He will not hear the wind blowing through the snow falling. Personification of snow. She is like a fanfare blowing a trumpet, announcing that winter has arrived. Shrill, high-pitched sound. Blowing to flame the golden cup. To flame, to feel strong emotion. The golden cup is a metaphor or symbol for a free Ireland in the future. Of many an upset daffodil. The wind has knocked down the daffodils and they are upset. This is personification. The Irish are sad and upset under British rule. The daffodils are also sad that Macdonagh is dead. Summary of stanza two. Because Macdonagh is dead, he will never again see the changing seasons, the loud March gales, the snows of winter, and the arrival of the daffodils. Here there are many negative images. Stanza three. But when the dark cow leaves the moor. In Irish poetry, the dark cow is often a symbol or a metaphor for Ireland. The cow is lost, just like Ireland is lost under British rule. Blackness symbolizes unhappiness. But when the dark cow leaves the moor, the moor is poor quality land, another symbol or metaphor for the poverty Ireland experienced under British rule. When Ireland, the dark cow, leaves the moor, poverty under the rule of England, and pastures poor with greedy weeds, the land is poor quality, full of weeds, unwanted plants, a symbol or metaphor for the poverty Ireland experienced under British rule. Perhaps he'll hear her low at morn. The poet is saying, maybe a time will come in the future when the dark cow, Ireland, will be able to enjoy better times in the future. Freedom from English rule. The dark cow will low. Low is the deep, low sound of a cow in the morning. She will be happy. She will be free from English rule. Lifting her horn in pleasant meads. She will lift her horn. She will be happy in nice meadows, in pleasant meads, in a free Ireland. Summary of stanza three. This stanza has much more positive images or pictures than the previous stanzas. The images here are more optimistic. The dark cow will escape from poverty and hardship. She will leave the moor and fields of weeds and will find pleasant meadows, meaning freedom. 
lifting her horn in pleasant meads. She will blow a horn to celebrate her freedom. And here we have a horn. Perhaps Thomas McDonough will hear her in his grave and he will be pleased that his dream of a free Ireland has come at last. Pathetic fallacy. The natural world and the weather are experiencing the same sadness as the poet feels from the loss of his friend Thomas McDonough. This is a poetic technique called pathetic fallacy. The rain is wailing, crying. The sky is wild, angry. The rhyme in the poem, meaning words with the same sound, the poet uses internal rhyme. The last word in the first line of each stanza rhymes with a word in the middle of the second line in each stanza. He shall not hear the bitter and cry in the wild sky where he is laying. Nor shall he know where loud march blows through slanting snows her fanfare shrill. The sounds in this poem are very important in creating the mood. Assonance, which is repeated vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, U, is used to create a melancholic, sad, musical effect. The wailing of the rain, long A sound creates an echo and a sad mood. Also, the long O sounds are repeated. No, blow, snow. These sounds are sad and mournful. Alliteration which is repeated consonant sounds, words are alphabet letters that are not vowels, slanting snows, creates a soft sound of snowfall. Pastures poor, creates a sad sound, p -p -p, like someone fed up. Lament for Th Thomas McDonough. Please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Alternatively, you can pop on over to Facebook page Michelle Benson, English Teacher.